Yes, I can hear you. Fine. Oh, wow, that's so great. I'm so pleased with that. Okay, check this out. You can also see me now, I think. Can you see me? Yeah, yes, I can. can. Hear you. you certainly can. Okay, so uh, hello, my name's Akim. I make internet videos and people watch them. And, and if you're having we wait for more people to for more people to join or should I just get right into it get right into it awesome so uh, I titled this presentation making videos that spread um, and I guess this sounds a bit clickbaity basically I added the tagline zero to three million views per video in nine months which is what I have uh, managed to do with my current project that I'm working on which is a civic education video series um, and there's a lot of interesting stuff that goes into that and there's a lot of useful information that I've learned over the past year that could help you reach more people and grow a loyal audience. So uh, without any further ado, uh, hold up. there we go. Number one, why video? I'm just going to go through this very quickly. Um, basically in 2016, according to a study, 73% of global internet traffic was video content. And it is estimated that by 2021, that number will go up to 82% of global internet traffic. Uh, basically, um, the human brain takes 13 milliseconds to process an image. So that's about enough time to read one third of a letter. Basically, the human brain is designed to watch and listen. It's not really designed to read. And in a time of shortening attention spans, the last thing you want to do is try to have a, a, a mainstream media approach using texts because basically no one's going to read it. So I think we can all agree video is a very good means of communication nowadays, especially on social media. Um, so the question is, you know, why me? Why should I teach you about how to make popular videos? And to start off, like very frankly, I'm not famous. I'm not exactly PewDiePie, so I don't have a hundred million subscribers. Uh, I make this, uh, I make videos, like I said, and I upload them to Facebook and YouTube. And more specifically, I make a civic education video series called Desaburit that teaches Romanian people about rights, laws, and public institutions in Romania. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sounds very boring. That sounds horribly boring. So I even added an extra slide just to highlight the fact that it's boring. Um, so the challenge with this series is to take these very boring topics, you know, civic education, some NGO stuff, nobody really cares, and make them entertaining. So what I want to do is to get people to watch these videos because they're fun, because it's entertaining content. They just want to go home and turn on their laptops or just watch this on the bus and just do it for the sake of it, just because it's fun content to watch. So here are the facts. Uh, we started this series called The Zaborit uh, a year ago. We uploaded our first video in February 2019, and we've been making videos about once a month for the past year, so it's about 12 videos. Like I said, we upload them to Facebook and YouTube. So on Facebook, which is our, well, has been so far our main uh, platform that we use, uh, we have 80,000 followers. Uh, we have about 600,000 views per video and our most viewed video has 3.1 million views. All organic, we haven't spent a single cent on advertising these clips in any way. Uh, on YouTube, we have about 40,000 subscribers. Well, it's growing, all of this is in its early stages. Uh, about 70,000 views per video and about 220,000 views on our most viewed video. So, um, basically I, I I split what I've learned over the past two years, over the past year, sorry, uh, in two parts. Basically, if you apply these two techniques, let's call them these uh, two elements, you can create a successful uh, social media video. And part one, the first element is, I titled it the most important thing because it is the most important thing. It's the most unpleasant, boring thing that requires the most effort uh, but it's also the most useful one. And if you skip it, you have no chance at reaching people. The second one, second part is tips and tricks. These will help you sort of engage your audience better. They'll help you attract more attention, get more clicks. Um, but 
basically you can you can get away by doing just part one that I'm going to teach you. Uh, but if you skip part one and you try to hack your way into becoming popular or find some sort of loophole in the YouTube algorithm, it's not really going to work. That's just my opinion. Like I said, I'm not exactly famous. This project is still growing. So part one, the most important thing when you're making a video, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, whatever. Most important thing in the world, and I'll pause for effect, and I wish I could ask you what you think the most important thing is, but I cannot hear you. So wait, let me just check the chat box real quick. Excellent on Ubuntu, okay, whatever. <clears throat> the most important thing when you're making internet videos is to have quality content. The number one thing you wanna focus on is providing your audience with something that they need, understanding their needs and working to best fulfill those needs. Um, quality content. So basically, social media sites, and this is my theory, but major social media platforms like YouTube and Facebook, they spend billions of dollars each year in order to design an algorithm that works perfectly to identify and promote content that is already good. You don't have to worry about hacking the algorithm. You just have to worry about creating the type of content that the algorithm promotes. And basically, ideally, that's just the type of content that your audience would like to see. So anyway, this sounds very vague. What is good content? So what makes content good? Well, you should ask yourself this question. Are you providing value to the viewer? I know it sounds really obvious, but so many people miss out on this because they start off with the wrong mindset. They start off by saying, okay, let's say you have an NGO. Let's say you're trying to protect the Amazon rainforest and you want to raise awareness to your NGO. You want to raise donations. Maybe you want to get people to volunteer. I don't know, anything like that. So what do you do? What do you do? You uh, get your team together, you sit around the table and you're like, okay, we need a marketing strategy. What are we going to do? Very easy. Well, we're going to, uh, we're going to make a video with funny animations because kids love funny animations. Uh, we're going to add cool music. We're going to add some cool trans cool transitions. Uh, we're going to, we're going to speak to the kids. You know, what else, uh, what else works when I, we're going to add some clickbaity thumbnails. <clears throat> and what you're doing is you're beating around the bush. You're constantly thinking of how you can scam people into sort of viewing your stuff instead of thinking, okay, this is my audience. This is what they need. This is why they follow me for, or this is why they would follow me for if you had, a, if you don't have an audience yet. Um, how can I best respond to those needs? How can I help them? What information could I offer them that would be valuable to them? So in the case of the Zaborit, what happened was um, there's a huge lack of proper civic education going on in Romania. Um, and people feel powerless in front of public authorities, uh, pol police officers, you know, uh, I don't know, just going down to the local city hall to get some sort of files, papers, you get scammed, you get, uh, you get asked to pay bribes and all sorts of stuff. And the issue is you really don't know what's true and what's not true according to the law. You don't know who to trust. And for that, well, you need to read the laws, uh, but no one's going to teach you anything about law in a funny, short, and simple way. Hmm, if only someone could make some videos that could teach you what a police officer can do if you get stopped at night and they want to search you. So what we did was we responded to this need of easy to understand civic and legal education. Anyway, are you providing value to the viewer? Ask yourself that. Before you think about how you're gonna promote yourself, first ask yourself how you can best help your audience, even if you don't have one yet. So as a practical example, um, if I were to tell you, let's, let's study law together. I'm gonna make a video series and we're gonna go through all of these books and I'm gonna teach you about each and every one of the subjects in these books and it's gonna be super fun. We're gonna have funny animations in it. Uh, that doesn't sound very appealing, does it? I don't know, maybe it does, it could work. But here's a better approach. Um, what if I went up to you and said, hey, are you familiar with this situation? You're driving your car, 
police officer shows up, pulls you over, walks over to your window, leans over your window and aggressively tells you, uh, you've been speeding, you have to pay a fine and you have to pay it right now cash. And at this point, you'd be a bit uneasy. Is this legal? Is he asking me for a bribe? Is what does the law have to say about this? I don't know because I haven't uh, studied law. So that's where the Zaborit comes in. Short, simple videos that teach people about rights, laws, and public institutions. And I'm just gonna take another example. Uh, that let's say you're an NGO or any, any type of organization and you, uh, you work to uh, promote this community living in the mountains. It's like a village someplace. Uh, and it's really beautiful and you know, it's a nice place. It's just that they, they have a really bad economy over there. There's no jobs. Uh, people are moving out. Uh, stuff is falling apart. No one's taking care of the area. And you're trying to raise awareness. You're trying to bring more people over. You're trying to encourage tourism. How would you do it? Well, here's how I would approach this situation. So, um, instead of saying, hey, this is our village, we represent this village, please come over, uh, you could make, let's say, a, um, a series of short or longer therapeutic videos where you just record certain events happening in the village, maybe someone building a house, someone uh, getting water from a fountain, just some relaxing videos that people can watch at home after a, a hard day's work and just keep uploading them, you know, just make these say 20 minute episodes of just things happening every day in this village and just keep publishing maybe once a week, maybe once a month and keep doing it. And gradually you'll build an audience because well, first and foremost, people are coming over to watch these relaxing videos and just chill out. Over time, what happens is they get more and more attached to your story, to the people living in the village. They, um, they start caring for these people and eventually they'll be like, you know what, I'm going to give some money. I'm going to recommend this place. I'm going to go on vacation. Um, and this is very interesting. It's basically called, well, I read this some time ago. It's called the sitcom effect. And I'm sure all of us have seen a sitcom. And especially with this one, especially with friends. Have you seen friends? I wish I could get an answer. Have you seen Friends? Could you let me know if you've seen Friends? You can raise your hands. <laughs> yes, okay. So, oh, someone saying 20 minutes per video seems too much for today's attention span. Yes, indeed, depending on your audience. Uh, it could work. I'm going to get into that at the end. Anyway, so you've seen Friends, right? Here's a very cool trick you can use. Sorry. Here's a very cool trick you can use when you're making videos. Remember when you first saw the first episode of Friends and then compare that to maybe the last episode of Friends. When you saw the first one, you didn't know the characters. It wasn't really funny. It wasn't very similar to the previous sitcom that you had seen. But as you watched more and more videos, you grew more and more attached to the main characters. characters. Eventually, you weren't even watching for the story or for the jokes. You were just checking in to see how your imaginary friends were doing. And that's just the way we're designed. We get attached to people. And through a video series, instead of a singular, instead of a singular video, you can um, make the audience slowly become, slowly feel like you're becoming their friend. Or maybe the people you're presenting in your video, uh, in your videos are becoming their friends. So in the case of this beautiful village somewhere, maybe you could start doing interviews with the locals preferably the same people, just over a period of time. And people are watching these clips simply to relax. Uh, I'll give you examples, like I said, if, it's, if we're talking about longer clips. If we're talking about shorter clips, maybe you wanna make a funny comedy series uh, about some kids running around this village at night and having fun, I don't know. Um, and yeah, like I said, people grow very fond of these characters and we, we start treating these characters as if they're our friends and if, and if our friends are in need of something, maybe in need of donations to save their village, uh, we'll be a lot more willing to help them. You be the judge. Anyway, 
Uh, but like I said, we started Desaborit, the civic education video series that I'm working on. We started it a year ago. And this is a graph showing how our uh, page followers have grown over the past 12 months. So we made about a video a month. And like I said, you know, repetition is key because, well, we started uploading in early February 2019. Nothing was happening. We kept uploading for about two months. Then if you remember in maybe May, uh, there were the European Parliament elections and there's a lot of, there was a lot of pressure going on, at least in Romania, uh, basically older people telling younger people to go and vote and bashing them for never going to vote. And shame on you, it's because of you, we've ended up like this. Uh, so I just figured, well, me and my team, we thought, okay, do young people, and not just young people, do they even know what the European Parliament is, what it does? So we made a video about it, uh, uploaded it, it got 800,000 views, and it got us up to about 6,000 page followers. And, uh, well, that worked nicely. That was the first taste of making quality content when, and, and providing people with the information that they're looking for at the right time. We kept uploading throughout the summer, nothing happened. And then suddenly this autumn, something happened. And uh, as you can see, we had some pretty exponential growth going on. So for each video we uploaded, uh, the thing kept going up. And the question is what happened? What did we do that produced this mysterious growth? Well, that's when we started implementing three very simple, very simple tips and tricks, all right? Now, let me just say, these tips and tricks are very useful. If you've done your job at creating good content, at providing valuable uh, information for your audience, or just something that is worth their while, something that they're looking to watch, something that they're interested in. So if you've done your job at creating quality content, these tips and tricks will work like gasoline on fire. Use them wisely. Number one, and my favorite one, is having a trending or a controversial topic. So if we go back here in early September, well, late September, uh, I made a video, well, we made a video about abuse in the public school system in Romania. And we talked about six very frequent forms of abuse, like kicking students out, uh, not letting them attend class, or not letting them exit the school building if they're above the age of 18. Uh, all sorts of like, uh, well, I'm not gonna get into that. Like, you know, sexual abuse from teachers and stuff, doesn't matter. Anyway, it was outrageous and very true. And it spread like wildfire on Facebook. Uh, and well, it's not even about the page followers. It's about the fact that we addressed an important issue and it, it was present. It was a major elephant in the room. I'm not saying we fixed it, we didn't fix it, but at least we, gave people something to look up to, something to show them, hey, there are laws in this country and public authorities are supposed to obey these laws and enforce these laws. And if they're not, well, you know what the law is, you can tell them to do it. Don't just shrug your shoulders or accept uh, being treated like that. So that's the first, uh, that's the first tip. Also, we made a video about what the uh, Romania, what Romania's president does. We did that in like November, 10 days before uh, the presidential elections. That was a trending topic. It spread massively, uh, got about 3.1 million views on Facebook. Anyway, second useful tip or trick is to have a catchy introduction. On YouTube, you can get away without a catchy introduction. So basically, let's say you, uh, yeah, on YouTube, people are more patient to watch longer videos, uh, whereas on Facebook or Instagram, it really helps to start very quickly and get people engaged very quickly. And for that, I recommend two things. Number one, start your video by making your audience question a strong belief. Um, for example, uh, with our public school abuse uh, video, we uh, started off by saying, hey, What's the difference between public schools in Romania and prisons? Well, the answer is, the difference is, in prison, you have toilet paper, which is true. 
uh, it was outrageous. It sort of makes you question a strong belief and it gets you engaged. Another thing that really, the second thing that really helps is on Facebook and Instagram, people usually watch videos without the sound turned on. So you probably do this as well. So it really helps, at least in the introduction, to add some very simple subtitles. Maybe uh, just like highlight the important parts just to get people interested, interested enough to turn the sound on. Once they've turned the sound on, they're a lot more likely to watch the video until the end, as opposed to just watching it with no sound, losing their interest and going away. So add subtitles in the introduction, keep them as simple as possible, and try to just break the ice right from the very beginning. Just don't be afraid to be outrageous. Well, I'm not talking about being blatantly offensive, but don't be afraid to say what needs to be said. The third very useful tip or trick is having a catchy title and a thumbnail. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a thumbnail is, basically when you go on YouTube, for example, and you're browsing videos, you see those little pictures and basically they attract your attention and get you to click Right. Uh, you can edit those thumbnails. You can add your own personal thumbnails when you upload a YouTube video. And it really helps to have something simple and flashy that is, contains just the right amount of information to get people interested enough to click. Maybe uh, you'll say, I don't know, maybe you can have a thumbnail where someone is looking into the camera and they're shocked. Uh, that just sort of signals that this video is shocking. Maybe you want to add, uh, I've seen this, uh, this, this little trick people do, especially if it's a video about finances, maybe about how much something could cost or something, you could add like the piece of information, maybe something is very expensive. You'll say, how much did this car cost me? And then you add the number and you blur it. So people see the thumbnail, they realize there is a figure, there's a number over there. They don't know what it is, so they click. Um, and having a catchy title that's self-explanatory, it's about, well, just keep it simple, keep it short, simple, stupid, make sure anybody can understand it. You know, especially like a kindergarten kid has to be able to understand it. <clears throat> um, and right now, I would like you to go to the poll section You'll see there's a poll section over here. Yeah. And I have some I have some questions for you here. I have two questions. So polling number one, uh, what is your experience with YouTube, Facebook, Instagram videos? Yep. It's up. Vote now. I think we'll leave it for like 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Sure, sure, sure. That's not a rush. And I have a, another question for you guys, and it's it's supposed to help me just if I were like in your situation, depending on what you're trying to promote or maybe you're trying to raise awareness, I'll just tell you what I would do uh, that could help you grow an audience. Okay. Okay, five more seconds, last vote. Because 65% of you have voted. Maybe someone wants to answer. Okay. I'm ending the polling now. And these are the results. Okay. Turn on the second poll. Can you see them? Uh, no, it's still the same one. Yeah, uh, but do, do you see the results of the first one? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 I've seen them. Okay, and then the second one. Okay. All right, so um, which of these best describes what you're working on right now? And by this, I mean like you're either trying to fix an urgent issue, which is, well, I had an example here. Someone's trying to cut down a forest, it's urgent. Uh, or maybe you just want to raise, build a community and you know have a group of people to support you over time in case you need it. So 
or maybe you're not working on anything or maybe you're working on something else, let us know because this is useful for what I'm about to say right after this. Mm -hmm. 56%, 60% have voted. Okay, you want to raise awareness. Oh, perfect. That's just good. Okay. My life a lot easier. Last Thank you <laughs> for uh, not trying to fix an urgent issue. Okay, I'm ending because the others can't see it. Like, we see it, but now everybody can see what the results are. Okay, very well. So you want to raise awareness and build a community. Perfect, absolutely perfect. I think we're on the same boat here. I'm not sure if that's an expression. Um, so here's the difference. Like I use, like I said, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, the the Zaborit civic education videos are designed for Facebook, but they're recently starting to grow on YouTube as well. Um, the difference between these two platforms is very controversial. Like no one really knows which one to use, which one works better. Um, Facebook is more of a social network. All your friends are there, and if there's something worth sharing, they will share it. For this reason, Facebook works very well to give you a very large reach very quickly if your content is important to spread if it's outrageous it will spread on facebook it might not spread on youtube youtube is more of a entertainment network people go there to relax to watch videos to just chill out after a day's work so shorter videos work very well on facebook i'm talking maybe about two to three minutes Whereas on YouTube, you may want to look into making 10 to 15 minute videos. Uh, also, if you're trying to fix an urgent issue, Facebook works a lot better. If the, uh, if the forest is burning down and you need to raise donations quickly, that type, of, uh, that type of event and that type of post will spread fast on Facebook. If you're trying to, going back to that village example, if you're trying to support the community in that village, you're trying to raise awareness about that village, it works a lot better to make 10 to 15 minute videos on YouTube and just structure them as a video series. You're, you're gonna take your time over here, you're gonna approach this over a period of maybe one or two years, you're gonna make a video a week, maybe a video a month. Uh, like I said, it could be about, it could be interviews with the people in the community. It could be uh, a vlog featuring a few kids living in that village. Um, and over time, viewers grow attached to these characters and they become supportive of them. They start caring for their story, their cause, um, kind of like a sitcom. So I'm not sure if that answers all of your questions. And for that, uh, we have a Q&A session now. And I guess that would work a lot better in the understanding what you're trying to fix and seeing how, how I would tackle it. Uh, so Maya, would it be okay if we go into the Q&A session now? Yes, of course. So the, um, the first question that was uh, posed uh, by Elion, and that's pretty specific, what video specifications should a filmmaker follow? Oh, wow, okay. Uh, video specifications, I'm guessing in terms of uh, how, what aspect ratio to use, uh, what number of frames per second, uh, what camera to use, that type of stuff. Could you answer in the uh, chat? Yes, Elion says yes. Uh, yes, okay. It really depends. Uh, the only thing I would advise and I would strongly advise is don't use, don't film video in 30 frames per second or more because this really hurts people's eyes. Uh, ideally, you should film a video in about 24 or 25 frames per second, which is what they use in feature films. And it's a lot more pleasant for the eye. And I guess that's how it's usually done. 30 frame per second videos look kind of weird. Um, also, I guess it's just standard. It's the norm to record video in 16.9 uh, 16, uh, 16 aspect ratio. Uh, as opposed to four by three, which is like an older TV aspect ratio, but this is very basic stuff. And at the end of the day, as long as your videos are uh, responding to a need that your audience has, 
uh, that's very good. And I don't think anyone's going to care about the aspect ratio or about the frame rate as long as they feel as if they're gaining something from your videos. You could film them on your phone. You could film them on a crappy 2006 camera. As long as you're providing something valuable and you're helping people, they will come back and they will appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a follow-up, sorry, I think. Um, Elion asks about what, about what about 4K or 8K? 4K or 8K, wow, okay. Uh, very specific. Again, I would recommend 4K because very few computers can handle editing in 8K video format. Even 4K is a lot. Uh, and, well, as a rule of thumb, for example, for my videos for the Zaborit, we filmed them in, um, in 4K and then we crop the video and zoom in or out, you know, just to keep it like flowing nicely, just to cut to different perspectives on my face. Um, and then we, well, the final export is in full high definition. That's 1920 by 1080 pixels. And it's pretty much okay. I mean, on a phone, no one cares. I guess even less than that works very well. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, there was an interesting uh, comment here. Well, not a comment, like a message. Hold on. Uh, chat. Someone said, if you pay, Facebook can be really generous. Be very careful with that. I'm guessing you refer to Facebook ads and using Facebook ads to promote your content because Mark Zuckerberg is evil. Well, I shouldn't have said it here. It's like, it's a parody. Mark Zuckerberg isn't evil. Uh, but the way Facebook works is it has to make money. It's a business. So at first, yes, you'll give them money and they will promote your content to large audiences. But over time, what they do is they lower your organic reach. So your posts are reaching less and less people. They're not even reaching all of your followers. They're reaching very few of your followers, just so you pay it more to share your stuff with more people. So it depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for a short-term solution, like if, you're, if the forest is burning down and you need to raise donations, yes, Facebook ads is a good idea. If you're trying to build a community over a period of two years, Facebook ads is a very bad idea. That's that's about it. We don't use Facebook ads. We have used Facebook ads on previous projects, and that's exactly what happened. Facebook lowered our organic reach, I think, or maybe we just mm -hmm. made crap content. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Akim, the next one is: Are audiences more affected when a story is told through the eyes of one individual, faces in general, or vice versa? Elliot or by what? I'm sorry. Or vice versa. Vice versa. Which I, mean, I guess it me uh, is more affecting through the eyes of one individual. Um, I don't know. Like, Ellen, could you specify? Because you wrote, our audience is more affected when a story is told through the eyes of one individual, faces in general, or vice versa, meaning more people. Oh, I mean, yeah, uh, that makes sense. So if. Uh about showing up oh, people in the video. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay, that Anna commented. <laughs> uh, but if it's about, well, it, I guess it depends. And not showing people in the video. Okay, great question. And again, I would strongly advise that you do feature someone in the video. Uh, it's just the way our brains are wired. We are used to seeing someone talk to us. Like here, let me show you an example. Uh, let me just show you this uh, this slideshow again. Yes, it's very interesting. So you just listen to me talk while watching a 30 minute slideshow. That's not very engaging. Now check this out. Check this out, check this out. Can you uh, see me full screen? Yes. Full screen, is it better? I'm talking to you. Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to our latest episode of the Megaphone webinar series. I really hope I'm on full screen right now. Uh, it, it's very engaging when someone looks you in the eye and speaks to you. It feels a lot more personal than just showing them text. And again, the way our brains are wired, uh, when we scroll through Facebook, for example, and while we're scrolling just very fast, this happens very fast, uh, we see, we briefly see the introduction of a video where someone is speaking to us, we automatically stop because someone is speaking to us, someone is looking us dead in the eye and we have to listen, they're trying to tell us something. So definitely uh, show people in your video talking directly to the camera, that works. 
again, it depends on the type of content you're making, but if you're trying to communicate something important to your audience, definitely show up in the video. Mm -hmm. Great. There is another one from Kasha, who is a tech to heroes communications wizard, uh, who is asking how to make viewers also your followers, not to lose them and make them our page fans. Okay, well, this is something that happens over time. Uh, I see a lot of people trying to create a viral video that explodes, conquers the internet, and then all of a sudden you have an audience. That's not really how it works. It's just like with your social life. You cannot make lifelong friends by just meeting someone once. You have to meet that person several times. You have to go through different adventures together and hardships and all sorts of things that will eventually strengthen your relationship. So uh, how to turn viewers into followers, I'd say the best way to do it is to just focus on the content, offer quality content, just focus on responding to your audience's needs as best as you can, and do that repeatedly over a period of time. It doesn't have to be that long. Like with our series, we've been doing this for a year and we built not the greatest audience, but still 80,000 people on Facebook, 40,000 on uh, YouTube is something. And they're coming back because uh, they're learning useful stuff and they know they can trust us to provide them with valuable content. So valuable content is king. Focus on the content. Great. I hope that answers the question. Great, great, great. Uh, are there any more questions? Because I for sure have some, but maybe uh, uh, participants want to know something more. Let's see. Anna is asking, what are other good examples of NGOs doing it right in your opinion when it comes to making videos? Oh yeah, uh, well I'm not sure if you've heard of this one. Uh, it's a Romanian based NGO. It's called uh, Sex versus the Stork. It's basically this, uh, well that's an English translation that I just did. It's basically this uh, woman teaching young girls and not only about sex, it's basically sex education on YouTube. And I feel like she has a very good uh, social marketing approach. She's been doing this for about six to seven years, maybe eight years. And her YouTube channel is actually, is actually interesting. It's engaging content. She has about 100,000 subscribers and it's only inside Romania, so it's something. Um, yeah, I, think, I feel like that's a, a good example to follow and look for. You can search, you can do a Google search, actually a YouTube search for sex versus the stork. The stork is in the flying bird that brings babies. That brings babies, of course. Because that's yeah. where they come from. Everybody knows it. Um, okay, any other questions? Because mm, I would ask, because obviously you haven't done this for a long time, but really successfully, but even looking back now, uh, after 12 months, right? Because it's going to be a one year anniversary. Like, yeah. what would you say were your biggest mistakes? Meaning like something you, that you wish you could avoid or like something you know now that you didn't know before? Uh, with this project, there haven't been that many because I've had projects before that I failed miserably at. Uh, it's mostly uh, tied to the first thing that I said, the most important thing, providing valuable content. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to fall into a trap where maybe you, you're getting a bit of views, you're getting a few followers, and all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm going to be famous. We're going to make so much money. We're going to be so popular. And you lose your grip with reality. You lose that focus on helping people. And all of a sudden you're thinking about how can I help myself? How can I reach more people? And there's no substance to that. You're not creating anything of value. You're just trying to help yourself. So the biggest mistake I've ever made, and I think a lot of people make in all sorts of fields, is forgetting that you have to help other people first and trying to help yourself. No, leave yourself aside. Leave your ego aside. Try your best to respond to your audience's needs. That's the best piece of advice I can give right now. Great, 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 great. There is, Isa is asking, do you have a list of your favorite viral videos and could you share them with us? And I guess it doesn't have to be now, we can add them to yeah. the follow-up email. Um, favorite viral videos. 
I'm not a big fan of viral videos, like I said, because I don't think they work that well in building a community at all. Um, well, I guess I'd be a bit selfish to say my favorite viral video is the one I made about the president's attributes. So I'm not going to say that. Um, viral video. I can't think of anything right now, but I'll think of something. And when Maya sends you the follow-up email, you will get it. Um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't recommend make, trying to make a viral video because when you're trying to make a viral video, again, you're shifting your focus to how can I become popular very fast? And nobody cares about you becoming popular very fast. They care about how you can help them. So try your best to help people. Sure, 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 sure. And I think there's another one. Um, what tools, apps do you use to create videos? Uh, this Which varies a lot. So that's from Kasha, but it's similar with what Alida is asking. What are the best free programs to make? Uh, Best programs that, that this really depends. Um, for for me, I use uh, I I do draw funny animations because they help in explaining these complicated legal topics. Uh, so I use Photoshop. I draw my animations in Photoshop. I have a graphic tablet right here that I cannot show you because I mounted my camera on the wall. And um, yeah, I draw the animations on a graphic tablet in Photoshop, and then I animate them frame by frame in a video editing software called Adobe Premiere Pro that you've probably heard of. And there's also Adobe After Effects if you've got something more complicated that requires more processing power and like, I don't know, explosions and flying stuff and whatever. If it's more complicated, you're gonna have to use After Effects. But this is some very, mm, technical stuff that doesn't really influence the quality of your videos in terms of what people can get from them. Uh, so you could have the crappiest quality video. I, I've said this before, but as long as you're helping people and your audience feels like they're gaining something, it really doesn't matter. Just aim to help people and worry less about technical stuff. You can just pay someone to do the technical stuff. But if you're looking at, to get into animation, uh, definitely use Adobe Photoshop. After Effects, Premiere Pro, and maybe Animator, I think. Yeah, it's like a software from Adobe. Um, this will be a, a short break for uh, commercials, but Adobe is actually available on most of TechSoup's uh, in almost all the country's uh, platforms. You can get it on a discounted price because normally it's it costs uh, the professional version is expensive, but you can check out TechSoup Europe's, uh, TechSoup's uh, website in your country and see if it's on the offer. Well, then definitely go ahead and try to learn it. It's very fun. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff with it, especially with Photoshop. Uh, Agnes adds that DaVinci Resolve is free. DaVinci Resolve, I've heard of it. I don't know exactly what it is. I know people who draw animations in paint and get a lot of viewers. So it really doesn't matter. Even paint works. Um, yeah. Sure. Da Vinci, I understand that it's for editing. Also. Oh, it's for editing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know people who use Windows Movie Maker, which is like very entry level and very easy to use. Uh, I highly recommend it if you want to learn how to make videos. Uh, and that does the trick. Sure. Just I'm having trouble. So sorry, sorry, my internet is breaking a little bit. Can you hear me? Okay, this is Anna uh, here because I can, I have um, doubts. Yeah, I'm back, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm back. Back. Fantastic, so I have one more question to read. Yes, 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 okay. Uh, but is it in the question? No, it's in the chat. Now in the question okay. from Marian. Oh, sorry, I don't see it. Uh, what cloud video editing platform do you recommend? Cloud, cloud video editing. I, I think Adobe has uh, this feature, but it's not very effective. And generally, editing on a cloud could limit like your uh, 
ability to edit like high resolution files, maybe depending on your internet connection. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know any cloud platforms. I don't use them. Like, and I know most professionals. I'm not calling myself a professional video maker, even though I may be. Uh, but they don't. They stay away from like cloud software or any kind of complicated sort of thing. Like, just stick to the basics. And like, Adobe Premiere Pro works brilliant for that. Um, and it's also on cloud. And that's about all I can say about using cloud editing software. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any more questions? Because if not, we will be finishing. Um, and of course, don't worry, you will add uh, all the links to the recording uh, to Akeem's videos. Um, in names of the programs he uses, viral videos he likes. Uh, it will all be in the follow-up email, which you will receive tomorrow. And of course, you can reach to us anytime you have uh, additional questions, uh, whether that be via Facebook or, um, or email. You can also use my email. You can the invitations for the, for the webinar. OK. Thank you, Akim, so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you everyone for coming and listening um, and hope to see you at the next webinars because the next one is just in two weeks time and it's going to be about trends and social media for 2020 with Parana Kvyachorka. Thank you so much all. Bye-bye. Have a great rest of the week. Bye. Bye.